Lately, I've been seeing a lot of people claiming data science is dead. This narrative pops up every few years. New tools come out, job titles shift around, and suddenly everyone thinks the field is dying. But this time does feel different, and I think that's what's making people nervous. We've had tech layoffs, there are fewer entry-level postings, and now we have AI tools that can do a lot of what junior data scientists used to do. Even personally, my intuition is that data science has been declining in the last few years. But I wanted to actually look into this and find out the truth. I'm Marina, a senior applied scientist at Amazon, and let's talk about what's actually happening happening in data science today, starting with the impact of the layoffs. During the big tech layoffs in 2023, surprisingly, only about 3% of people let go at major tech firms were data scientists, compared to 22% who were software engineers. Even more surprisingly, an industry report found that data science job postings grew 130% year over year from July 2023 to July 2024. Current projections from the Bureau of Labor Statistics also predict strong growth here, showing 35% growth through 2032. And relatedly, salaries have actually gone up since the 2023 dip. So this is unintuitive. The field is actually growing overall, but breaking in feels harder. Why is that? Maybe AI, 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 generative AI. A recent Harvard study specifically looked at what happens when companies adopt generative AI. They analyzed resume data from 62 million workers across almost 300,000 US firms between 2015 and 2025. Here's what they found. Before 2023, Companies that would later adopt AI and those that wouldn't followed the same trends in terms of junior hiring. The lines tracked together. But starting in early 2023, right when tools like ChatGPT became widely available and higher quality, junior employment at AI adopting companies declined by about 10% over six quarters relative to non adopters. The top dashed line is for companies that didn't adopt Gen AI. And you can still see a decline in junior employment, but it's not as steep. Contrast this with employment at the senior level, and you can see no change in employment between AI adopters and non-adopters. Now, the study found that this wasn't because companies were firing juniors. They just slowed down hiring new entry-level people. The routine tasks that used to justify those hires, like data cleaning, writing simple code, drafting documents, these things can be handled by AI now. So companies just didn't hire as many of those people as they normally would have but more senior roles that are doing work that's hard to automate haven't been impacted in the same way. Now, that doesn't mean that companies aren't hiring junior roles at all, though. They're hiring fewer and looking for different things. Specifically, postings requiring Gen AI skills went from 55 in January 2021 to almost 10,000 by May 2025. The biggest jump again was in early 2023, right around that ChatGPT launch. And for specific roles mentioning Gen AI, the top two, were data scientists with over 3,000 unique postings and machine learning engineers also with around 3,000 unique postings. So companies aren't saying that they don't need data talent. They're saying they need people who can use these AI tools. The research also shows the technical expectations are broader now. Python and statistics alone aren't gonna be enough to get you a job. Job postings are looking for people skilled in cloud platforms, data pipelines, model deployment, and more. Interestingly, Python mentions and job postings actually dropped from 78% to 57%. This isn't because Python isn't required anymore. It's actually the opposite. It's just assumed that you have strong Python skills, so it isn't even worth listing. Knowing how to code in today's job market is table stakes. And if you want an engaging way to learn these skills, you should check out the sponsor of today's video, BootDev. BootDev has courses specifically on data analytics using Python and SQL, which are the foundational skills you need for data science work. If you're trying to get into this field, this is a really solid way to build those skills from scratch through hands-on projects, not just watching tutorials. If you're already in the field but want to level up, they also have backend development courses in Python, Go, and TypeScript, or guided projects on things like building an AI agent or CI, CD, and Docker. The Harvard study showed that senior roles are the ones growing, and having stronger software engineering skills helps you get there. What I like about BootDev is the hands-on approach. You're actually building things, which is what you'll do on the job. And they have an AI tutor called Boots that helps you when you get stuck. But instead of just giving answers, it asks questions to help you figure it out yourself. Plus, it's available right in your browser in this fun, gamified format that keeps you engaged. All the content is free to read and watch. The paid membership unlocks the interactive coding features and progress tracking, but there's a 30-day refund policy so you can check it out before you commit. Go to boot.dev and use the code in the description to get 25% off your entire first year on the annual plan. So the thing is, companies have changed what they're looking for and who they hire. But weirdly, despite the difficulty many people are having finding jobs, companies are also struggling to find the right people. Unintuitively, there's actually a major talent shortage. There are over 220,000 open data science positions in the US alone, and McKinsey projects a 50% talent gap by 2026. That doesn't sound like a dying field to me. Instead, it sounds like the skills that are required are evolving faster than people are learning them. There are jobs. Companies want to hire, but they're looking for a different skill set than they were a few years ago. So learning to use AI tools is important. That's clear from all this data. But what really makes you valuable are the skills AI can't replace. Things like business impact and understanding how 
how your work connects to actual outcomes, domain knowledge of the industry you're working in, and stakeholder management and communication. Okay, so given all this, where does the data science job market stand? I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. The Harvard study confirms what many people are feeling. Entry-level hiring at AI-adopting companies has slowed significantly, but it's not impossible. You just need to be strategic. Your projects need to show more than just technical skills now. You need to demonstrate AI proficiency and create projects with clear business impact. Another path that's working is starting as a data analyst and moving up. The research shows companies are more likely to promote from within than hire junior data scientists from outside. So you might need to get your foot in the door somewhere adjacent, prove your value, and then advance into data science from the inside. If you're more experienced, the research shows this is actually a good time for you. The Harvard study found senior roles kept growing even as junior hiring slowed. There's a talent shortage for experienced people. So is data science dead? The research is pretty clear. Nope. The field isn't dying. It's evolving, and if you're willing to evolve with it, there's still a lot of opportunity. If you're interested in becoming a data scientist, check out the link in the description for my free 80-page guide on how to become a data scientist in one year, starting from scratch. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.